Big news, Mike just announced. He will drive for Colleg Racing in the number 13 Nutrient AG Solution Chevrolet in the Food City Dirt Race at Bristol Motor Speedway Sunday, April 9th. So we got a lot to talk about. From Blairsville, Georgia, Jonathan Davenport joins us. Tell, tell us your thoughts and how that even come about. How did Jonathan Davenport, uh, we know your capabilities on dirt racing is phenomenal, probably a hell of an asphalt racer too in the right equipment, but how did you get hooked with Colleg and uh, how did you get this opportunity? Uh, well, Nutrient Ag Solutions have been um, a sponsor of mine ever since Nutrient Ag was a company. Back before then, um, it was a company, a couple of companies merged. Crop Production Services, being one, was a was a uh, a partner of ours, and then uh, they become Nutrient Ag Solutions. So, it, since the that that was the start of the company, you know, we've been partners with them. So now they're partners with Colleague Racing and AJ Amendinger through the Xfinity Series last year. And they did a few things with Ross Chastain a couple of years ago and uh, maybe Jeb Burton, but um, it's really stuck here at college racing. And, um, you know, we, we had a huge year last year. So we started working on things back last October, November, trying to get everything put in place. And uh, it finally worked out for, you know, this awesome opportunity to be with college racing and Chevrolet to run the cup car at Bristol. Yeah. Well, we're all excited for you. I, I hope you know that, that the, like, the whole dirt world, and now you've convinced a lot of asphalt fans that they're excited to see Jonathan Davenport race at Bristol. So, you know, got a lot of pressure on you just to let you know. So, <laughs> but that's okay. I got big shoulders. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> He's Superman. Yeah, Come Superman. On. What do you got to have a little kryptonite or whatever, you know? There you so, go. so, Jonathan, in the, uh, the, the preparation for the Bristol Dirt Race in regards to just understanding the team, the car, fitting in the seat, uh, what do you think about that compared to what you normally do? And ha have you been supplied any opportunities to get in the Sims stuff here at, uh, at the Chevrolet facility? Um, well, as far as just uh, getting fit in the car, um, I've, I've got to go up and do that. Um, got, we got everything mocked up. I'm actually going back this week to, to finalize everything, um, get back down in and again with, with my seat in my actual car. It was just a, a show car we'd done before and poured a mold for the seat. But, um, yeah, just trying to come recognizable to everything down in and be comfortable. Uh, I'm a I'm a pretty big guy, so it's hard to get in and out of those things. But once I get down in there, I think I'll be okay. And uh, I haven't had any any kind of practice or, or any sim time yet, but that is hopefully scheduled for the future, maybe a, a, a session or two with the sim. I'm not sure how much I can learn for the dirt on that, but like I said, maybe just uh, familiarize me with, with the car and the shifting and all the gauges and uh, the spot, the spotter talking to me. I, I haven't had anybody in my ear in 20 years, so right. that's going to be definitely different. Who's going to spot for you? You got a spotter lined up? Uh, yes, colleague does have a. I don't remember his name, but they was telling me about it that he he spots for someone for colleague now in the Xfinity series uh, now. So he, he's going to move on over and and uh, help me out with the cup car. So right. back up just a little bit. Is is NASCAR going to allow any practice before the dirt race at Bristol? I on they, track. I believe they are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have. You would a, think so. Right? Yeah, I've uh, cuz it's so different. My uh, I've been getting information on Bristol from my brother Kenny. You know, he's the honorary uh, ambassador for the Bristol Dirt Race. Right. And they're going to have that one of those They're doing a race show and all that. Track side show outside yeah. and all that. So he's uh telling me what all they're doing and uh of course, as I mentioned at the start of the show, Jonathan Davenport's name is the head of everything right now in the Bristol area and around the race and you know, he he's famous from his dirt world. Now he's bringing his, his talent, as they would say, to NASCAR racing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Jonathan, what is the, uh, what's your next step to get ready for Bristol? And then we're going to move into your career. Um, just, you know, I guess getting physically fit. I, I guess mentally fit for, for the race. Uh, you know, I haven't ran that, that long a race ever. Um, you know, just sitting there, the, the concentration level that you have to have and for that, 
that long a period. So uh, that's what I've just got to get prepared for. Um, luckily, um, we're not doing live pit stops, um, so that that's going to help me a, a little bit. And, uh, you know, just really focusing on keeping all my rookie mistakes at, at a minimum and um, just trying to uh, ha- have a good race. Yeah, I think you're going to find that you're going to be more relaxed in that car than you thought because they're not as erratic as the cars that you drive. So <laughs> it's all going to be calmed down a little bit. But, hey, let's let's now move to what the show's really about, and that, again, is who were you before who you are. I need you to take me back as far back as you can remember and tell your fans and all the new fans that are out there, where did Jonathan Davenport come from? Where uh, When did you first get exposed to motorsports, and how did you do it? Um, well, just, uh, my, my dad raced my grandpa on my mother's side on race cars, all dirt cars. And, uh, ever since I was just a kid, um, our, our weekends was at the dirt track. You know, I was riding in my dad's lap while they were packing the track in and, uh, driving his Monte Carlo. So I got big enough where I could drive it myself, uh, while they was, you know, ro- rolling the track in, in the mud laps. And then, um, started in go-karts when i was seven won my first race i was ever in and dad always said i thought i had to win everyone since then (laughs) no pressure (laughs) yeah exactly and uh moved on up to uh uh uh, four stock uh mini stock uh four cylinders when i was 10 um tried to move into late models when i was 12 uh back then you know they kind of frowned upon a, a kid getting it out there with that faster car. So after we signed in at Newburgh's tracks in my dad's name and let me race after they figured out it was me, that they, they wouldn't let us come back anymore. Oh, so really? <laughs> uh, we moved on to the, to the legend cars on asphalt. And, uh, I, I was a pretty big kid, uh, for my age. So I believe at that time you couldn't even run a legend car. He was 13 or 14. So we fudged that just a little bit and um got, got to race legend cars for several years there and uh, won a whole lot of races in the uh, in the pro division all across the country with it um moved on to asphalt late models um there's asphalt then, late models that you raced well, were they super late models pro late models late models like are pro- on the east coast here you know or what yeah they, they were pro late models we we ran at lanier mainly um you know we, I got to interrupt you. You know, Lanier was my first Bush Series race. Oh, really? Okay, Back that's awesome. I won. I won uh, that had been a long time ago. Long time ago, nineteen ninety. I don't even remember the Bush Series racing at Lanier. I, 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 I was eleven when they let me race there. <laughs> but uh, when you said Lanier, I just uh, I, I run third in my first All right. well, that ever race, and there was a kid by the name of David Green and Jeff Gordon who outrun me. I've heard, no, I've heard, of, you heard, of, I've heard of those guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I, about that. I interrupted you there. <laughs> no, that, that's totally fine. So, yeah, just uh, coming up through those ranks, and uh, it, it was a time about where um, speed equaled money. And uh, it, it depended on how much money you had to how much speed you had. Well, we didn't. We didn't have a whole lot of money, uh, but we we had a lot of grit and a, a lot of want to, but that only take you so far. So, yeah. Uh, my parents uh, basically went as far as they could with me at, to that point, and uh, it, it wouldn't get us nowhere, uh, nowhere further. So we come back to dirt. Uh, my grandpa had an extra car sitting there, and uh, so I started running late models again on dirt. This would have been probably in the early 2000s, and uh, just uh, progressed from there to, uh, you know, really just uh, being a, a, a really not – weekend to weekend uh warrior racer trying to just get by you know just barely building motors blowing motors borrowing tires getting old takeoffs from people to uh finally um some getting more sponsors and helping with, with new tires and wheels and better cars and better equipment and uh that's what's got me where i am today just keep stepping up the ladder yeah so it sounds like you worked on your cars also along the way am i understanding that right yeah, I, I was always very hands-on. Even from when I was a legend car to when I was 13, 14 years old, I've always been very hands-on with my car up until the last several years now that um, 
I, I'm not as near as hands on what what I once was. Um, but uh, back in the day, yeah, I, I didn't have no money to, to pay anybody to do it for me. So I, I had to be the one out there learning and uh, figuring it out on my own. Yeah, the reason I asked that question, there's a real misconception in today's race world. There's a lot of young kids that are just drivers. They know nothing about their cars, and they act like they don't want to know anything about them. You know, they just kind of get out and walk away, and somebody else is making the decisions. And uh, just, they're, they're, again, there's a, this misconception that, oh, you, you don't have to know about your car. You just got to go drive it. But you find the guys that know about it, they outrun you every time. You know? <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, for for sure, you know, but um, and and you know, with that too, today you, you can't go, you can't build a lot of things. Uh, now you you basically buy everything, so everybody can can buy the same components. But I still know how to w- work on everything on my car. I can do I- anything that that needs to be done. If somebody is uh, getting a little behind on their job, um, I can go help them out, and we we'll, we get caught up that way. But I I feel like I do understand uh my race and my race car pretty well and uh that definitely uh helps me making uh decisions for setup plus so you're driving for lance landers now right what, what do they call the team is there a name to the team uh double l motorsports double l motorsports and i <clears throat> i got two emails this week I, I put a little announcement out last week that you're going to be on the show and got a response from, of course, some race fans. And they asked me to ask you a question, which I normally don't do this. But I guess, did you have a crew chief change or your main guy decided to go do something else? And do you, any good person, it's hard to lose, but do you have a, a good replacement for that person? And I, I'm just out reading the messages I was. I don't have the name. Sure. So who? <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's totally fine. Uh, yeah, so uh, when, when we first put the deal together, me and Lance did five years ago uh, in 2018, we got Jason Durham, which was one of his old crew chiefs and one of my old crew chiefs that we'd, all, that we'd both already worked with, and we brought him on board, and he's been with us leading our team the whole time until uh, the end of 2022. And he decided to, to slow down a little bit. He had more grandbabies and uh, wanted to come off the road and stay at home more. So uh, he he went and done something a little different. And uh, we brought Corey Fossman on. And uh, he, he's been great so far. You know, he, uh, he he's a little bit younger than Jason. He's, a, he's the same age, age as I am. But he fits right in uh, with uh, my other team engineer, Benny Giuliani. And uh, we brought on Michael Bigsby as our tire specialist also. So it's just uh, out of the four people I had, um, or three people besides me, um, one of them stayed, and we, we got two new guys this year.